Welcome to the second section of my video on the summer sky. In the remaining sections of this video, I will introduce you to some of the brightest objects in the summer sky. Many of these can be seen with a pair of binoculars. All can be observed using an 8-inch telescope from a suburban site. However, as I described in my star hopping video, going to a darker site would be better. In this section, I'll focus on Messier objects in the constellation Sagittarius. In the next section, I'll look at several objects in and around the summer triangle. If you're interested in finding these objects on your own, then please consult the charts on my website. If you're unfamiliar with using astronomical charts, then you'll benefit from my course on star hopping. This is available from my website or YouTube. The first object we will look at are a pair of open clusters M6 and M7. These are located on the border of Sagittarius and Scorpio, near the stinger of the Scorpion. They are both very bright, M7 being slightly brighter. In a dark sky, they should be visible with the naked eye. In the photo, M6 is the higher of the two clusters. An open cluster is a group of stars that happen to be created in the same place at nearly the same time. The stars are only weakly bound to each other, so in time they'll drift apart. The clouds of dust we talked about in the first section are the fuel of star formation. We will look at one area where star formation is occurring in a moment. M6 is relatively close at 1600 light years away and is about 12 light years across. Like most open clusters, it is young at about 100 million years. M7 is slightly closer than M6 at about 800 to 1000 light years and bigger, about 25 light years across. Our next object is located just to the left of the top star of the teapot and has the designation M22. M22 is another type of cluster called a globular cluster. Don't let the similarity in the name fool you. This is an entirely different kind of object than an open cluster. For one, globulars are tight balls that are gravitationally bound, unlike an OC where the stars just happen to be in the same area. Other differences are the globulars are old and very far away. M22 is 10,400 light years away. For globular cluster, that's close. It's estimated that M22 consists of as many as 70,000 stars packed into about 100 light years. This is the brightest globular visible from the northern U.S. Most globular clusters are fossils. They formed early in the life of the universe. The stars in a globular cluster seem to follow different rules than normal stars. Their chemistries indicate that they are mostly first generation and do not contain the byproducts of past supernova. However, stars of this kind should not burn as long as stars in globular clusters seem to have. This is an area of active research. For more information, see the further reading section in the credits. Many, if not all, of the current generation of large galaxies have a halo of globular clusters that surround them. Presumably ones near our galaxy are orbiting the center of the Milky Way, but the dense dust and stars of the central bulge prevent us from seeing any globular clusters in transit through the center. A variety of instruments, including the author's own telescope, can also be used to observe globular clusters surrounding other galaxies. M31 has several that can be observed with a large amateur telescope. The next two objects are located above the spout of the Sagittarius teapot. In the darkest skies, these are visual objects, but in most locations you'll have to perform a very easy search. Located close to each other are the two bright nebula, M8 and M20. The southernmost object, lower in this picture, is M8. M8 is a star-forming region about 5,200 light years from Earth. In the distant future, it will produce an open cluster like M6 and M7 we looked at earlier. The young cluster NGC 6536 is already visible. The glow that you see is caused by the same effect that causes fluorescent lights to glow. The emissions from one or more high-energy stars are causing an area of gas to compress and glow. This in turn is starting new stars to form in the gas cloud. M8 is a combination of bright nebula, dark nebula, where star forming is occurring, and an open cluster. It's an object worthy of more than a quick glance. Located just north of M8, higher in the picture, is another interesting nebula, M20. This is another star forming region about 5,200 light years away. The bright nebula is a combination of emission nebula, where the gas is glowing, reflection nebula, where the light of some other glowing object is being reflected, a dark nebula, which is clouds of dust, and open cluster, the result of star formation. The most distinctive feature is that the bright areas appear to be divided into three sections by dark bands, from which the common name Triffid is derived. This is another stellar nursery. 
The Caltech website in the credits uses different wavelengths of light to break apart the various pieces of the nebula and discuss what can be seen using the various parts of the spectrum. Located northeast of the main part of Sagittarius and above the bright patch of stars known as M24 is another star forming nebula, M17. M17 is known for its distinctive shape. Most locally call it the swan, but it has other common names. The stars causing the nebula to glow are hidden by the nebula. Thus what you see in the telescope is a bright glowing patch. Since the nebula contains a lot of hydrogen gas, it glows brightly in red. Unfortunately, that shade of red is beyond human color vision. For us, the nebula is either gray or it might appear to be bluish green. We think the nebula is between 5 and 6,000 light years away. Continuing north along the Milky Way, we are going to leave Sagittarius. Located just above M17 is M16. M16 is another combination open cluster and nebula. The open cluster will be easily visible with binoculars or a small telescope. The nebula will be more of a challenge. This photo uses the red hydrogen alpha color, which shows both the open cluster and the harder to see nebula. The bumps are the location of the most famous of all Hubble pictures, the pillars of creation. These show a star forming region close up. Please keep in mind that like many Hubble pictures, this is a false color picture and not what you would see with your eyes. While the open cluster is easy to see, the nebula is very dim. In a small telescope, the pillars of creation will likely not be visible. With a larger scope, 15 inches or greater, you can observe the nebula. Unfortunately, the hydrogen alpha glow is too red for our eyes to see. However, it is visible using a filter that passes a different kind of light, called oxygen 3, or O with a Roman numeral 3. Our eyes can see that shade of greenish light. The filter will remove other light that obscures the view of the nebula. Using a filter, the pillars will just be visible. That concludes our tour of the Sagittarius region of the summer sky. I've only focused on the brightest objects. There are many other objects with interesting stories. I've included a couple of others in the credits. In the next section of the video, I will follow the Milky Way north to the section near the summer triangle. While this section talked about star forming regions, there we will look at several objects that represent the death of stars. Music